Hello, welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to look a bit more in detail at some of the Team Yankee 15mm models, what you can do, that sort of thing with them. So it's a kind of a new project, Cold War Gone Hot. You've probably seen my other videos about it. Um, I've talked a bit about models, so let's show some off. So these are from the Team Yankee uh, kind of previous start set, the one with just the tanks in it. Now these, this start set was donated to the SEVC Hub by Battlefront itself. So these are being painted by one of the club members with some help for some veterans. In fact, the painted models back from my World War II tanks I'm going to show off, my T-55s, have been done that way as well. So what we have here is a, a M60, which the era, the sort of Team Yankee, early 80s, early to mid 80s, Cold War Gone Hot, is a change from the old style tanks to the new style tanks. So the M60 was the main battle tank for a considerable length of time. And it's starting to get replaced by the M1A1 Abrahams. Um, I think this A, I know it's a superb tank, but B, I think it's an ugly tank compared with uh, pretty much every other tank of the era. So those are the uh, tanks there. Now, what's really interesting is when I was thinking about this video, I would uh, got some of my World War II tanks out. So... I suppose the equivalent of the M60 would, would be the Humble Sherman, and these are Battlefront as well. And the Churchill, which was the heaviest, well, one of the heaviest and biggest British tanks there was. Similar sort of length, but just doesn't have the, the depth and the gravitas that the um, M1A1 has. So I thought that would be a funny comparison there to show off the size between, there you are. The Sherman, which was the mainstay of uh, Allied tanks during the war, and the M1A1, which is the mainstay of American tanks these days. What a difference. Uh, the other thing you got in the box was the Bradley fighting vehicle. So again, this is uh, sort of the new era of fighting vehicles uh, designed to A, have a little cannon on top, but it's to support infantry. It's an infantry mobile mechanized force and again because this is changing over this is kind of the new era uh, you could still and i was delighted to hear see this use m113s so i've got a whole troop of m113s for my vietnam project fair enough then i'm not going to paint them up into this modern european uh, era Camouflage, uh, they're just going to be basic standard sort of Vietnam era green. But uh, yeah, I've got seven of those as a little mortar carrier as well. So it's kind of the old and the new. So that's the Allied I have at the moment. And again, the um, Huey, Huey helicopters we use as well as like a marine mobile formation, which uses Hueys. I think the Cobras have now been replaced by Apaches. But let's have a look at some Soviet tanks. So, Soviet troop transporter, a BMP3, a BMR3, a couple of T80s, using airbrushed with a bit of dry brushing on them, a T64. So, again, these are out the old starter set. So, again, this is the equivalent of the Bradley. Going to transport some infantry and it's got a, a support weapon on top. T 80 is probably the more advanced of the Soviet tanks. T 64, again, that's equivalent of the uh, M 60. The T 80 is equivalent of the uh, M 1A1. As we found out though, that the T series of tanks were no match for American tanks during. Uh, the Gulf War. So there we are some some of the Soviet tanks we see here with different people with different uh, colours as well, like dry brushing. Now, as you saw in a previous video, I had got the T-72 Tank Battalion Warsaw Pack Start Set, which comes with five T-55s. And I'm, these with some of the T-55s I'd already painted. Now this is for my uh, modern Africa 
campaign, sort of war game I was doing. So I have a series of these, which takes my T55 continued up to 10. A lovely looking tank. In fact, the T80. T80 is a lovely looking tank. Which is like about Soviet tanks. The Soviets did make a, a massive amount of tanks. Um, the other thing which we have coming is new plastic, hard plastic infantry. Don't need two of the same sprue. So this is the American sprue. I think it's 15 figures on here. So two sprues in the start set gives me 30 figures. All my figures I'm going to be mounting on the bases, four figures to a base. Uh, I think that's going to suit Cold War Commander and Battle Group North Ag best. And I know Flames of War has some of the support weapons on two bases and heavy weapons on big bases. But yeah, I, I really like the look of the sort of fire teams on four bases. So we are with the uh, American Sprue. And also have the Soviet Sprue. There's a wee uh, broken end of a rifle there. A wee bit of super glue on that will fix it, no trouble. So with the Soviets, I've already been painting up some of the previous edition Soviets. Now I think I might have gone a bit too light on the Soviet uniform. Which I'm just going to put maybe a wee bit of Agrax shade on to tone it down again. This uh, actually was was one of the Platoon Blister Packs. And they're not finished, not quite finished yet. I, I want to highlight up the webbing a bit more like so throw a bit of agrax shade on and i've got some gleaming flesh to throw on the faces um but this represents a couple of hours work yesterday um, i've got a head of steam on and i really enjoy painting them i love painting 15 mil figures so once they're all finished see we've got the gleaming flesh this was the first strip i had finished and all i'm doing is putting down uh, undercoated them gray Put down my base quartz in this case was um, Steel Legion Drab. Uh, some sort of Castellan Green on the helmets. I used Einrak skin on the webbing. It's sort of like a greeny uh, colour, a light green colour. Uh, black on the boots, black on the weapons, but still kind of great. Um, through our Shade over. I've been using Zago Red Shade rather than Agrax Earth Shade actually. Really enjoying how that brings out colours. And then Gulliman Flesh. And the last thing I'm going to do is pick out red. So, so lapels. Um, I've got badge markings on them. And if you've seen the pictures of the Soviets in the Team Yankee pictures, they've actually got sort of like red ammo cartridges going into their rifles rather than the the brown in the painting guides so i'll be uh, getting some of those and sorting those out so let's have a quick look at size comparison similar sort of run of figure yeah their size comparison pretty much spot on not a problem uh, talk about painting guides you might remember me talking about this in a previous video and this has got it wasn't relevant to me for ages i was just using this as a really good world war ii guide world war ii guide for kind of even up to bot action figures and stuff really good painting guides uh actually take it up to the end and you've got a whole series of cold war team yankee painting as well so yeah just a really good resource hope you understand what tanks are different camo patterns, that sort of thing as well. So, yeah, really good resource. It comes in at less than 15 quid as well. So, uh, if you're into painting 15 mil, World War II, modern, such a good uh, painting guide. But anyway, that's what I've been working on so far, what I have. Uh, if you've been doing Team Yankee stuff, let us know what you've been doing. Um, I'm really interested in what rules you use, actually. I say in another one, I talk about the rules we're thinking of, but we're always open to new ideas. But anyway, thanks for watching. Look forward to chatting to you in another video. Goodbye.